Hey, young scientists. So um, what I'd like you to do in order to uh, have some notes and think about the graphs and the equations that we've been looking at lately. So I'd like for you to grab a couple index cards. Hopefully you have some of those. I think I asked you to have some in the syllabus. If you don't have an index card, you can uh, cut up a piece of paper. You can also just do this in your notebook. Um, but the index cards is one of the ways I like to organize a lot of these equation kinds of things. And so if we think back to what we've been looking at over the past couple of days, one of the big things we've been looking at is slope. And so if we wanted to define slope for a graph, we would define that as rise over run. And if you're thinking about looking at a graph and what you see on that graph is you see rise over run to compare two points. And the other way you could think about that is if this graph is X and Y for the axes, then our rise is our change in Y over our change in X. That's what this triangle means. This triangle is the Greek letter delta, and it means change in, in this usage at least. Now you could rewrite the delta y over delta x. You could use numbers in the places of the y's and the x's. You could also use subscripts like i's and f's. So delta y is always going to be the final y minus the initial y. So y final minus y initial is one way you could write that. And then the same would be true for x. Oops, x, i. So the final x minus the initial x, OK? Now, we could also write that as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And the advantage of doing it that way is that if you have more than two points, you could evaluate slopes along different segments of a graph. And so you might have different segments that have different slopes. So far, we've only been looking at um, perfectly linear graphs uh, with the gizmos this week, at least. So all of this is the way that you could write slope. And the way that we symbolize slope when we include slope in other equations is with the letter M. And so we could put that here with the slope so that we know how it would be symbolized, okay? So that was the slope. Now we did this on an index card because we're gonna come back to this and put some more stuff on the back later on. Um, if you're trying to turn this into a flash card, then you wanna think about what you put on the front and what you put on the back so that you can uh, run through and think about the definitions of these terms, but so that you could also maybe look at a picture like this, like this graph. And when you see this graph and you see rise and run, or you see this little dashed um, sides that make a triangle with the graph line, that should be making you think of slope whenever you happen to see that, okay? So that's slope. And the other thing we looked at this week, and it wasn't necessarily explicit with the cat and mouse gizmo, but is that we have a um, slope intercept form. Of linear equations. And that that is almost always written as y equals mx plus b. Now notice that I used a color code for the y before. So you could actually write this using colors if you wanted to. So you could say y equals mx plus B. And then the fun thing with the colors is that then you could 
define those and show them on a graph. So of course, M is going to be the slope, which we've already defined as rise over run. And B is the Y intercept, which I'm about to show you again and remind you of what that is, okay? And so with this equation, Y equals MX plus B, we can use this to represent any line that we see, any straight line that we see on a graph. And so let's flip the index card over. So here is my graph and X was pink and Y was purple. So here is my X axis and here is my Y axis, okay? And if I have a line on this graph and you're, I'm gonna ask you to draw a few lines or sketch a few lines on this graph, okay? Then our slope, remember, is our rise over run. And so you might want to think about drawing a triangle and saying rise over run. And then that would be the slope, right? That's the M is the slope. How quickly is it rising? But then the other thing you can see on this graph, assuming that X equals zero, for where this axis is, this y-axis, as long as that y-axis is positioned where x equals zero, then wherever that straight line crosses the y-axis is our y-intercept. And so you might recall on the cat and the mouse gizmo, this y-intercept was being called the head start. This was the head start that the mouse had. So this was how far away from the cat the mouse was when they both started to run, okay? Now, this is mathematically called the y-intercept, and we can um, think about this with a lot of different situations, not just running uh, with a cat and a mouse and whether they catch up or don't catch up, but... Um, also, uh, a car driving, a car speeding up, a car's velocity, a car's acceleration. So there's all kinds of physical things that you could actually plot on a graph and evaluate over time and look for things like slope and y-intercept, okay? Now, um, on your graph, on your index card, if you're doing this, I'd like you to sketch two other lines on here. Now, one of those lines needs to have a negative y-intercept, okay? So this y-intercept here, this is a negative, negative value because it's below the x-axis. So assuming that the x-axis is positioned at y equals zero, just like the y-axis is positioned at x equals zero, then b's up here would be positive these down here would be negative, okay? Now, if you can't draw a triangle with this line, if we can't drop anything down, then that means that the slope is actually zero in this case, the way I drew the line, although it's not perfectly drawn, but this would be a horizontal line, and a horizontal line would have a slope of zero. A vertical line would have an undefined slope. We, we couldn't calculate it because there would be no run, right? If it's perfectly straight up and down, then the run would be zero. And at least right now um, in math class, you guys don't know how to divide by zero. So, and that doesn't even come up until maybe in calculus. So, um, so horizontal lines, slope is zero. Vertical lines, slope is undefined, okay? Now what I've drawn here so far is I have a line with a positive slope and a positive intercept. I have a line with zero slope and a negative intercept. I want you to sketch a third line on your index card or in your notes, a third line that has a negative slope, but it can have any value you'd like for the y-intercept. I am gonna sketch mine through the origin so that my y-intercept here will be zero or just about zero because I didn't get it perfectly through 
but I'm going to say that this B equals zero. And then, of course, this slope, this is the rise now, right? But the rise is actually going down. So this is a negative rise, correct? And so my slope here is negative. And here it's positive. So you want to have something like this so that you can look at this. You can flip the card over when you're looking at these equations and you can see how those variables relate to what's on the equations. Okay. Now let's come back to our slope card again real quickly and let's flip that over because whatever you're doing for slope, you can um, have different variables on these axes, right? So let's say that if y is time, I mean, if x is time rather, and y is distance, well, our SI units for distance, and this is a little bit of review, and this is some of the stuff, the units at least, that you're gonna need to know on the test that you take when you return. The units on time are seconds, and the units on distance are meters. So if you do a delta y over delta x, what you're really looking at is you're looking at the change in distance over the change in time. And we're going to say specifically next week what this actually is, but our units here would end up being meters per second meters per second okay and this is going to be something and we'll fill in what that is next week now what if you're not looking at distance and time what if you're looking at um volume and or mass and volume if you're looking at x is volume and y is mass then you're going to end up seeing change in mass over change in volume. And that will equal our units would be typically say grams, but um, let's go ahead and say kilograms here. Okay. And our volume would be, let's say, cubic meters. And this is also going to represent a specific kind of quantity. More so when we say grams and cubic centimeters, but this mass over volume is going to represent a quantity. And you could plot these things on a graph, and the units on your slopes would change, but they are still slopes and they are still going to be the rise over the run, but this is the connection or the bigger connection that these will have back to graphs, okay? And so as we look at physical properties of materials, as we look at motion and forces in our next unit a little bit actually, um, although we'll do some motion with these graphs when you guys return to class, as we look at those, we're going to see that we can apply all of this stuff to um, graphs and motion and all kinds of things in physical science. So what I'd like to do for the last couple minutes of the video is I'd like to bring you back to this equation, y equals mx plus b, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and write it again in color. So y equals... M X plus B. Okay. And we can rearrange this equation using algebra. And so um, let's say we wanted to solve this equation for the slope. You could normally look at a graph and determine the slope. 
But if you have the, the, this information, if you have a point and you know that the line passes through that point and you know what the y-intercept is and you don't have a graph, then you could calculate the slope using this equation, using algebra. So if we want to get m by itself, what we would need to do, and I'm not going to do this part in color, is we would actually have to subtract b from both sides. So we would have y minus b equals mx, okay? And then to get m by itself, we would have to divide both sides by x. So we would end up having, and I'm going to write it over here, that the slope equals y minus b over x. And so in this case, then we've solved for the slope. So we could rewrite that in color if you like. M equals Y minus B e over X, okay? Now, the other thing we could do with this equation at the top is we could arrange it to solve for B. Well, solving for B would be really easy because all we would have to do is subtract MX from both sides. So again, not in color, but I have my Y equals MX plus B. If I subtract MX from both sides, then I have Y minus MX equals B. So again, in color, Y minus M X equals B, okay? Now, notice that not only could we rearrange for M and for B, but we could also rearrange to solve for X. So let's say that you know the slope of a line and you know the y-intercept of the line and you wanna solve for when that line for x when that line is at a particular y value. So let's say you know how fast a car is going and you um, know how far away it started from your house and it's getting closer to your house and you wanna calculate how long it would take that car to reach your house. Well, there's other equations you could solve that for. You could, there are other equations you could use to solve for that information but notice that if you have a speed that's like a slope, if you're trying to find the time, that's the X. If you know the distance the car um, started away from your house, you could think of that either as Y or as B. You could think of that like the head start for the mouse. And you're trying to find when that distance away from your house reaches zero. Or you could solve for when it's halfway away from your house, okay? Or you could solve for when it's, um, a certain distance away from your house that's not zero and then it's not halfway just because you want to know when they're a mile away or something like that and so let's flip this card over and if we're trying to solve this y equals mx plus b for x well we want to get x by itself so it's actually going to start out kind of like when we solve for slope and we're going to subtract b from both sides so now we have y minus b equals mx. But now what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for x, not m. So we're going to divide both sides by m instead of by x. So that's going to give me x equals y minus b over M. Now, the point of running through these isn't because you have to memorize all of these formats. The point of running through these is to show you that you can solve for any of the variables or constants in this equation, as long as you just remember Y equals MX plus B. And you can solve for any of these for any straight line relationship on a graph. Okay, so make sure you're thinking about this. Try to think about some real life uh, connections.
when you might plot things on graphs and when you're trying to find um, things that would show up on the Y or the X axes or why, what the slope is connected to or the Y intercept when you're looking at these different things, okay? So um, I'll take little screenshots of these index cards and paste those into your OneNote as well. So if you didn't get anything down from the video, you can look at your OneNote. 